the new 13-inch MacBook Pro is the first M2-powered Apple laptop to hit the market. While the design hasn't changed, Apple promises a big leap in performance, whether you're editing photos or videos or running multiple applications at once. However, while this notebook sports a new slice of Apple silicon, the design shows its age. You get the same form factor, same ports, same display, and same webcam. Meanwhile, the new MacBook Air offers a larger display with thinner bezels, a 1080p webcam, and thinner, lighter design. The new MacBook Pro features the same unibody aluminum design that has been around for the better part of a decade. It's not that the laptop has an unattractive design, but the thick bezels and the often maligned touch bar feel like relics, especially when compared to the redesigned 2021 MacBook Pros and MacBook Air. Port selection is minimal, with only two Thunderbolt ports on the left and a single headphone jack on the right. There are no configurations featuring additional ports. The new MacBook Air has the same number of ports as the new MacBook Pro. However, since the Air has MagSafe charging, you can argue that it has more available ports. The new MacBook Pro's Magic Keyboard is roomy enough to comfortably type on for long stretches, as I did when writing this review. The backlit keys provide a good level of resistance when pressed, I typed pretty hard, but didn't feel that the keys were fragile to work on. I wish the keys made a proper click sound instead of a dull thud, but that's a small complaint that frequent laptop users won't have. I am, after all, a mechanical keyboard enthusiast. The touchpad is just as roomy and responsive as the keyboard. Its smooth surface makes it ideal to swipe and perform gestures. I'm not a fan of the hollow sound produced when clicking on the touchpad, but enabling tap to click and system preferences solve that. Who says Apple doesn't let you customize anything? I have mixed feelings about the infamous touch bar. While I don't necessarily hate the OLED touchscreen resting above the number keys, I would have preferred proper function keys. Considering how last year's Pro models and the new MacBook Air have done away with the touch bar, it's strange to see the 2022 MacBook Pro have the touch bar. This is another design aspect that makes this new machine feel outdated. Speaking about holdovers from the past, let's discuss the laptop's middling webcam. In a world where so many people rely on video conferencing for work and to keep up with loved ones, a 720p camera is less than ideal. This is doubly true when 2021's MacBook Pros and the new MacBook Air all pack 1080p cameras. With that said, picture quality isn't horrendous. The image quality is somewhat grainy and washed out, but you're still going to look presentable to whoever you're speaking to. Apple said the M2 helps improve the 720p camera's overall image quality, and based on my experience, I have to say this is true. But, acceptable or not, it's hard to justify a 720p camera in 2022. As with design, the MacBook Pro has the same 13.0-inch Retina display as its predecessors. This is both a pro and a con. The screen delivers sharp images and vibrant colors. If you're watching the latest Final Fantasy VII Rebirth trailer on YouTube or enjoying Prehistoric Planet on Apple TV+, you won't be disappointed by the overall picture quality. With that said, the Retina display isn't as impressive as the gorgeous mini LED Liquid Retina XDR screen of 2021's MacBook Pros. Per our lab test, the MacBook Pro achieved an average of 474.6 nits of standard brightness and 490 nits of HDR brightness. Though lower than the advertised 500 nits of brightness, it's brighter than the M1 MacBook Pro's 439 average. Apple promised better performance from the M2 chip powering the new MacBook Pro and MacBook Air. Though the new processor isn't as powerful as the M1 Pro and M1 Max chip, it's a marked improvement over the original M1. It outperformed its predecessor in the Geekbench, Handbrake, and Puget Bench tests. You can see the results in our written review. The laptop never chugged even when I had well over 20 open Chrome tabs while texting on Discord and running YouTube videos. I also never once heard the laptop's fans kick in. Granted, I'm not a video or audio editor who pushes productivity laptops to the limit, but it's still nice working on a notebook that remains quiet, which is something I couldn't say about the Intel-powered MacBooks of old. The M2 chip is a monster when it comes to video and audio editing. However, in terms of gaming, it's a major disappointment, even with titles optimized for Macs. At 1920 by 1200 resolution and very high graphical settings, Rise of the Tomb Raider only achieved an average of 25 frames per second. The M1 MacBook Pro saw similar results running at 1440 by 900. Though the MacBook Pro 14 inch failed to reach the desired 60 frames a second, it still managed to achieve an acceptable 39 FPS on average. Lara Croft deserves better than this. Even with Civilization running at 51 FPS compared to the M1 MacBook Pro's 38 FPS average, 
it's clear that Macs still aren't capable gaming machines. Perhaps Metal 3 API can deliver better experiences, but as things stand, gaming on Macs isn't yet up to snuff. The M1 MacBook Pro was a long-lasting laptop that didn't produce a lot of heat. Thankfully, the same is true of its M2 powered replacement. In, in fact, it's one of, if not the longest lasting laptops we've ever tested. In our Tom's Guide battery test, which involves continuous web serving over Wi-Fi at 150 nits of screen brightness, the MacBook Pro lasted 18 hours and 20 minutes. This isn't quite the 20 hours of battery life Apple promised, but it's still extremely impressive. In contrast, the new Pro outstrips its predecessor which clocked in at 16 hours and 25 minutes. And it even beats out the MacBook Pro 14 inch, which clocked in at 14 hours and eight minutes. Put simply, the MacBook Pro can last for an entire workday and beyond. Like the 2020 M1 MacBook Pro, this laptop doesn't get overly warm. Its underside reached a maximum temperature of 85 degrees, which is 10 degrees lower than what we consider to be uncomfortably hot for a laptop. Likewise, the touchpad never went above 79 degrees. This is the coolest running and quietest laptop I've ever used. I was initially skeptical of the new MacBook Pro. M2 power or not, its outdated design looked more archaic compared to the sleek and modern MacBook Air. The fact that you're paying $100 more over the thinner laptop makes it even harder to justify. Though I maintain that the MacBook Air is the overall better deal, the new MacBook Pro shouldn't be dismissed. I realize it doesn't exist in isolation, but on its own, it's a more than capable laptop for both everyday users and professionals. Its active cooling system, 10 GPU cores as standard, and long battery life arguably make it more enticing over the air. It's also possible some may like the older design, touch bar included. And while the M2 chip might not be as powerful as the M1 Pro and M1 Max processors, it's a step above the M1. Old design aside, the MacBook Pro is an improvement over its predecessor. If you need a laptop that can deliver sustained performance and is an overall great device for everyday and advanced computing, the new MacBook Pro isn't a bad investment. This is especially true for those who've never purchased a MacBook or who are still lugging around an Intel-powered Apple laptop. But if you don't require a machine for creative projects and simply want a device for work and watching content, then you're better off waiting for the MacBook Air. Be sure to head over to Tom's Guide for a full review of the new MacBook Pro. Also be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. Tom's Guide, this was Tony Polanco.